ओम ज्ञानतिमीरांदानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति भक्तिवेदातस्वामीनामे नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर In this session, we'll be discussing from the thirtieth verse of the eighth chapter of the first canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, continuing the prayers by Queen Kunti. Janma karma cha vishwatman ajasya karturatmana tiryan rishishu yadasu taratyanta vidambanam. So Kunti Devi is uh, saying, of course, it is bewildering, O soul of the universe, that you work although you are inactive. that you take birth though you are the vital force and the unborn you yourself descend among animals men sages and aquatics verily this is bewildering and so uh, in this particular uh, prayer kunti is helping us understand something about the characteristics of the supreme lord which seem to be uh, self contradictory so uh, prabhu shila prabhu par explains in the purport the transcendental pastimes of the lord are not only bewildering but also apparently contradictory in other words they are all inconceivable to the limited thinking power of the human being what is the reality we cannot conceive of a, a personality who simultaneously unborn and still takes birth is active yet he has nothing to do so we cannot conceive what kind of a personality is that even though the supreme lord is all pervading super soul of all existence still he appears in the form of a boar among animals in the form of a human being among uh in human society as rama krishna etc or he appears in the form of a rishi like nara narayana rishi or in the form of an aquatic like a fish matsya avatara still kunti is saying he is unborn when the scriptures declare aja bhagavad gita krishna says ajo pisannavya yatma is aja he is unborn and uh, name parthasti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana krishna says in bhagavad gita here also it is said he has nothing to do and even in the vedas न तस्य कार्य करण च विद्यते दिस इन ओपनिशंस सो इफ वी प्रॉपरली हियर फ्रॉम द राइट सोर्स लाइक प्योर डिवोटिस लाइक कुंती एंड ऑल द अदर आचार्यस देन वी कैन गेट सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट कृष्णस पर्सनैलिटी एज इनकनसीवेबल फॉर our tiny brain uh, everything is possible for him because everything is reconciled in his personality every action of the lord actually is bewildering for the common man because none of his actions are ordinary they are all extraordinary lord means performer of extraordinary activities always not sometimes always now in the 
Brahma Samhita it is said, he cannot be understood by Vedic knowledge. Vedeshu Durlabham. But he can be easily understood by the pure devotees. Durlabham, Adurlabham Matma Bhakto. Uh, it is very easy to understand for the uh, uh, de pure devotees. So, therefore, it is the pure devotees who know that although he appears among animals like another animal or he appears like a man or a rishi or a fish, he is eternally the Supreme Lord under all circumstances. And his activities prove that. Activities prove that. When the Lord appeared as a fish, he instructed Satyavrata. Satyavrata was a great king and he was a devotee also. So the Lord instructed him in transcendental knowledge. You see? So which fish will instruct transcendental knowledge to somebody else? That's because he is the Supreme Lord in that form. The form may appear like a fish or a boar or a human or half man, half lion, all kinds of um, inconceivable forms. Simply for the sake of his pastimes, he appears in such forms. But all of those forms are completely spiritual. There is not the least tinge of any materiality in any of those forms. So therefore... Uh, Kunti addresses the Supreme Lord Krishna here as Vishwatman, the vital force of the universe. In everybody's body, there is vital force. Huh? There is the Atma. But, just as this whole body works because of the presence of that vital force in the heart of the living being, similarly, the whole universe is working because Krishna has entered this universe as Vishwatma. So, uh, he is the supreme vital force. Supreme vital force. We are all present in this universe, but we are not in the center of the universe. We don't control the universal working. We have no influence to do anything in this universe. But Krishna's actions, they are meant specifically for our understanding. If Krishna is present as the why supreme vital force in the center of the universe? Where is the question of his taking birth? So he will not take birth. Why he has to take birth? So therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna clarifies, I take birth and I perform activities, but they are all transcendental. They are not ordinary. Janma karma chame divyam and Evam yo veti tattvataha, one who understands this real nature in truth about the activities and appearance or birth of Krishna, such a person upon leaving the present body need not take birth again in this material world, but instead attains Krishna's eternal abode. In the beginning of her prayers, Kunti Devi said that Krishna is within and without every thing, but still is invisible. Now, for example, Krishna is in everyone's heart. He is into, entered into every atom also. Andantarastha, Paramanu, Chayantarastha. Paramanu means atom. 
So he entered into every universe, he enters into every planet, he enters into every living being's heart, he enters into every material atom. So Krishna is within everyone and everything and he is outside also as Vishnu, he is outside of everything. He never comes in touch with the material nature, material world. So, he is outside of everything also. So, therefore, Krishna we cannot understand by some ordinary logic, by some material calculations, by descriptions uh, given in terms of uh, uh, some material observation. That will never help you understand Krishna. We have to hear devotees like Queen Kunti. Now, there is a description of Krishna's uh, Virat Rupa or Vishwa Rupa, one form of the Lord. Uh, the external body of Krishna as described in the description given of the Virat Rupa or Vishwa Rupa. The hills and mountains are described as the bones of the Lord. So many hills are there, so many mountains are there. They are all described as the bones of the Virat Purusha. The great oceans have been described as the different holes in the Lord's universal body. The planet Brahmaloka has been described as the upper portion of his skull. Like this, the universal form has been described in so many ways. Now, it is said here by Srila Prabhupada, there are people who can simply think of God as being great, but they do not know how great he is. They are thinking in terms of what they consider as great. So, then they are misled to believe some devatas as God or some other powerful person they think is God. So, therefore, the Vishwarupa description of the Lord, Supreme Lord, is given in the scriptures that if you think of greatness of the Supreme Lord, uh, think of uh, the hills and mountains as the bones of the universal form. So, how many hills are there, how many mountains are there, you cannot count. So, this form is the, the universal form is very, 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 very huge, nobody can see. Arjuna was given special eyes to see that universal form. Otherwise, nobody can see this form of the Supreme Lord. So, Krishna is simultaneously greater than the greatest, Mahato Mahiyan and he is smaller than the smallest, Anoraniyan. That is Krishna's uh, wonderful uh, characteristic. Simultaneously, he is greater than the greatest and uh, smaller than the smallest. So, the Vishwarupa is the biggest form of uh, anyone in this entire universe. And the form of the super soul was entered into every atom is more, much, much smaller than the atom. That form of the Lord is actually the Lord being smaller than the smallest, Anoraniya. So, this is also greatness of the Lord. Simultaneously, is present as the greater than the greatest and smaller than the smallest. So, in this way, 
we hear from the proper source, we can understand Krishna to some extent. At least we can begin to render devotional service and become uh, uh, and our dormant devotion is awakened and our life is successful. We go back to God. That's all. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.